Hey guys, how you going? Hope you're all doing very well. Spanish Gems 669 Friday review for the House of Horror. The film I've chosen to review for you this week is an Australian horror film. It's not necessarily marketed as a horror film, but it does centre on a on a real person in Australian history that did a horrifying thing. So it is based on real events. So if that's your kind of thing, um, then you know this movie should appeal to you. Released in the year 2009, it's spoken in the English language. Directed by Jonathan Altahida, and this film is called Van Diemen's Land. Now, Van Diemen's Land is the name that Tasmania used to have. And if you don't know what Tasmania is, it's a state in Australia that is located on the little island beneath the actual, the majority of the country. So, um, yeah, Van Diemen's Land, it is set in the convict era in the 1800s in Australia. So it's kind of a period piece. So the story to this one is as follows. The true story of Australia's most notorious convict, Alexander Pierce, and his infamous escape into the beautiful yet brutal Tasmanian wilderness. In 1822, Pierce and seven other convicts escaped from the isolated Macquarie Harbour Penal Station on the wind-lashed western coast of Van Diemen's Land. This band of Irish, English and Scottish thieves were immediately hurled into the chaos as their bid for freedom floundered, and they were thrust into the heart of a harsh and foreboding landscape. With little food or equipment in a place these immigrants knew little about, they battled the merciless enemy, the unforgiving barren land. A land where God wields an axe. It's a movie set in eighteen twenty two and it features Alexander Pierce, which was the most notorious and well known convict in Australian history. Uh, now Alexander Pierce was responsible for eating some of the other convicts that he escaped with. So it's a very horrific story and you know, just the idea of the whole film will be enough to capture the interest in a lot of horror fans out there. So basically, 1822, Alexander Pierce and seven other convicts, they were working hard labour at this penal station, and they ended up escaping the authorities and seeking refuge in the wilderness of Tasmania. Now this is a very harsh and foreboding landscape, I mean this is not a place to get lost, it's beautiful, but it can be so scary at the same time because it's very cruel. So quickly, these uh, convicts, they didn't have any plan, so it was just a spare-of-the-moment thing, and they realised that it's a lot more difficult to survive in these harsh conditions than they uh, first thought. So they start to starve, and they're lost, and they have nowhere else to go. So this is where they come up with the idea that they're going to have to eat the weakest convicts. So it turns into a very psychological horror film where it... it basically depicts what humanity is capable of when we're put into a dire situation. So if you want to know how the movie unfolds, please go out there and see this movie for yourself because that's as far as I'm going with a synopsis. Now my thoughts on this movie. Very, very, very fascinating person Alexander Pierce was. So when I heard that a movie was made about him, I know there's another movie out there somewhere. I can't recall the name right now, but I haven't seen that one. I'm going to have to give that one a look. But when I heard about the story and who this movie was about, uh, what this movie was about, I thought I had to get it, and I had such an expectation I was even excited to see it because Alexander Pierce, he resorted to cannibalism, and I thought if this film was done right, it would have been sensational. Unfortunately, it is a very good film, don't get me wrong, but it should have been a hell of a lot more than it actually was. Now, the problem with the film is that the characters were very interesting, but on paper, uh, if you've read up on this story, you'll know exactly what I mean by that. But in the film, they don't take full advantage of the interesting potential that it had. Uh, the character development is just not strong enough. Um, they're kind of cardboard cutouts. So when the bad things start to happen, yes, it is very psychological, very disturbing. It's not an overly graphic film, so gore hounds are not going to really like this. But when you get to see these guys put under the extreme conditions, I don't feel that it really utilised uh, the full potential that it actually had. Uh, there are scenes where it kind of got things over with very quickly. They came to decisions very quickly that were obviously ghastly. And I just thought that a little bit of realism was taken out of the film, which inevitably hurt the movie overall. The ending was very, you know, bland. Um, you know, it's not supposed to be a happy film, but I actually thought with a bit of a powerful ending, it could have um, portrayed itself a lot better. But it just meandered along towards the end, and I actually thought the director was out of ideas, and he just didn't know how to finish it. But having said that, you know, the acting is very good. The scenery is absolutely breathtaking, as is the case with many Australian films of this type of nature, where it deals with, um, you know, the barren landscapes. So cinematography is excellent. It's a very dirty sort of feel of the film. 
Uh, it's very dirty times in Australia. You know, these were convicts sent over from Ireland to Scotland and England uh, because Australia was seen as the perfect prison. So this, for Australians, is going to be a little bit more appealing than the rest of the world because it is about our history. But, yeah, it is a movie about cannibalism. I thought the movie could have been a little bit harder in the violence as well because although it's a ghastly story, I don't feel that the violence in the movie did the story justice. I just don't think it was ghastly enough. It should have been a little bit more shocking, and I actually thought the director was playing it safe in a lot of um, a, a lot of moments in the movie. So all in all, you know, if you you like your history pieces, uh, you like movies that are based on very fascinating real people, then this is definitely a movie for you. I'm giving it three and a half stars. I definitely think it's worthwhile, but this one should have been a masterpiece, but I just couldn't help but come away with it thinking that it was a missed opportunity. So it's three and a half stars for the Australian film Van Diemen's Land. It is coming recommended. All right, guys, that's my review for this week. Until next week, keep watching horror, and I'll see you later. Bye.